Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on The Slant Lens, I'm here at Michael Jensen's home, and he's allowed me to do a great portrait of him here today, part of our One Light Portrait series. Today's concept is creating contrast and depth with values. It's interesting because lights and darks are opposites. So as something is lighter, it comes forward in the image. As something is darker, it pushes back into the image. So you might think to yourself, how many things can you control in a tight shot of a face on a simple background with one light? Actually, there's a lot of things going on here. First off, Michael has very light hair, which for me, if I put him on a light background, that's gonna make that hair, his hair and his face is gonna recede more into the background. It's not gonna have the same power and presence as if I put him on a dark background. Also, his shirt. Do I want the shirt to be part of the story? There's a constant play going on in a visual experience because you're trying to take a three-dimensional world and put it into a two-dimensional experience. So in order to create depth and interest, you want to give contrast that gives you something coming forward, something going backwards, and that gives interest to the eye and interest to the viewer and makes your portrait a lot more exciting. So let's get started. We'll shoot each of these, talk about each one of them as I look at the images and just see exactly what we've got. So let's get started, see what we can do. So we've got an Aperture 300D light here bouncing into the ceiling, which is a great amount of light because it just opens this whole room up. But I'm shooting at 200th of a second at 4.5. And because of that, 200th of a second, I'm really killing a lot of that light. I get just a, a slight faint shadow of him, uh, which is fine. It's not gonna affect us at all. So when I'm doing these kinds of shoots, I like to keep the strobe dialed down as, as far as possible. So I'm only on about three out of eight stops on this strobe, which means I can shoot very quickly. It's gonna recycle really fast. That's really what I want. I don't wanna shoot and have to wait for it to recycle. So I'll be able to click, click, click. So what's creating the contrast? This is white, white hair on a white background. And what's creating that contrast is that because of the butterfly light, I've got nice deep shadows on the side of the face and shadows falling on his hairline, shadows falling across his cheeks. And that gives me some separation from the background. And then of course the dark shirt gives me a base there. Then that dark base kind of brings forward a little bit, but allows the, the face to sit there and it's a very nice setup. So I'm gonna shoot eight or 10 of these, and then we're gonna try it with a white shirt. All right, here we go, Michael, there we go. He's in a white shirt now. Michael's got on a white shirt, light hair, light skin, light background. It just disappears. The shirt is way too much. Now this is a way you can create contrast. If I don't have the ability to put him in a, a dark shirt, I can always go like this. I'll just simply take my softbox and I will take and I am going to feather it as much as I possibly can and just shoot out of the corner of it and it'll start to vignette on his white shirt and that's gonna take a lot, of that, uh, a lot of that exposure off his shirt. It's gonna look a lot better. And it's never gonna be dark, but it's certainly not gonna be as, as nuclear white as it is right now. This kind of, I've got a nice compromise going here, actually. I've got the shirt is not too bright. The background is a nice white. His hair is separating because of the shadows that are falling because of the uh, butterfly light. I mean, it's, it's actually not, not a bad. It's very much a high key type of portrait, you know, which means his facial features, his eyes, his mustache, his, uh, the, the goatee really are what are coming forward. The contrast, because everything is on a high key level, means that the dark elements are now coming forward. And that's really using that contrast to create interest and depth. The, the dark shadows and the dark features are, are coming forward, the white is receding. So here's our first shot on that black background. The background, even though it is dubatine, that dubatine really sucks up the light, I'm still getting just a little bit of detail on that. I'll have to crush that when I go into post later. But I'm still getting those nice shadows on the face. The light is up a little bit, which means it starts to fall off a little bit on his chin, which I don't love. But the white shirt is not just uh, blasting out, which is really a good thing. So we're going to go to a, just an all dark shirt, but Michael pulled out this country western shirt and I love it. So we have to shoot some of these. It's fabulous. So we'll shoot some of these. Still has that dark. This is a great example of having this uh, kind of the, the gold on the shirt. That's going to come forward too. It tells part of the story. So we don't mind having light on that. It's really, it's part of telling the story of the portrait. So we're going to shoot some of these. This will be a lot of fun. So there's a look at contrast and value creating separation and depth in a two dimensional world. I mean, it was interesting. The, the on white stuff was actually a lot prettier than I thought it was going to be. A little stark, but kind of a like a modern sci-fi look. But yeah. yeah, very cool. So which ones did you like the best? Which The most striking, obviously, is black on black. Uh, like you said, the, the whatever your eye always goes to what's light, and so the, the face pops out and for a true portrait. A little ominous though, like you said, for a corporate, uh, I could see where a president might not want to look yeah, that way. I know, I look that way. But uh, they're, they all are kind of cool in their own way. 
So really, we want to use contrast, and contrast is not just about black or white, it's about a combination of you know, your background and your foreground. So if you're on a black background, you know, light's going to come forward. If you're on a white background, dark's going to come forward. So it's a matter of using those different contrasts to be able to tell your story. What do you want to communicate? What do you want to say about this person? You know, I love it when Michael put on this, this shirt because it, this, it really gave us a little bit of, of story about him and helped us to, to tell the story. So I thought that was fabulous. And the guitar came out. It's all excellent stuff. So, so use contrast to be able to communicate what you want it to do. Make a decision as you do your portrait in the situation you're in about how you want to communicate using contrast. All right, well, I want to thank Michael for allowing us to do this uh, portrait of him, and we're going to get him some prints. Hopefully, he'll uh, like those, and uh, hopefully his wife will like those as well. So just make sure you follow us here at The Silent Lens. We'd love to have you a member of our family. Give us some feedback about our lesson. Leave a comment in the comments below. It helps our lessons to do well and helps us to understand what you like and would like to see more of. We're going to do a series of these. You'll see more of these in the future, so follow us. Uh, all of the different platforms, we're out there on all of them. We have great downloads you can purchase from our website at thesunlens.com. Click on the store. Everything from food to video to stop motion and estimate how to estimate, which is a really good one. So there you have it. So keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking. I think what music does, what all arts should do, is communicate to people. Um, you know, the famous... Uh, story where they, the, some interviewer asked Bob Dylan what this song meant and he said well what's it mean to you because it's all subjective I could it means this to me it means something else to somebody else and but there's always a commonality of communication and that's what good art does whether it's uh, painting film music you name it